Bruce Lee's legacy is marked by a combination of physical prowess, dedication, and innovation that transcended the boundaries of martial arts and cinema. Weighing just 63 kilograms and standing at 5 feet 7 inches tall, he possessed a punching power comparable to heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali. His ability to break wooden boards from just an inch away testified to his extraordinary strength and technique. Like Michael Jackson revolutionized breakdancing and singing, Lee transformed martial arts, blending agility, power, and grace in a way never seen before. Although Lee starred as the lead in only four movies, his impact on the film industry was profound. He established a new paradigm in action cinema, inspiring countless actors to emulate his style. Some of the most renowned action heroes of later generations appeared as extras in his films, a testament to his influence. Despite living only 32 years, Lee achieved his dreams during his lifetime, a feat illustrating his immense drive and ambition. His rigorous training routines set him apart. He didn't rely on standard punching bags, but opted for heavier ones, usually used by heavyweight boxers. This intensive training might explain how. Despite being half the weight of Muhammad Ali, his punch packed a comparable force. Lee also practiced push-ups using just a thumb and a finger, showcasing his extraordinary physical control and strength. Beyond his physical achievements, Lee was a visionary. He predicted in writing that he would become one of Hollywood's most expensive superstars. This ambition was perhaps inherited from his father, an actor who had dreams of making it big in the United States, but could only reach the status of an average stage actor in San Francisco's Chinatown and later in Hong Kong. Bruce Lee's exposure to the world of acting began early, often accompanying his father to movie sets. This exposure led to his entry into the film industry at just six years old. By the age of 18, he had already delivered impressive performances in 20 Chinese films. His journey reflects a unique blend of inherited ambition, personal drive, and unparalleled skill, marking him as an iconic figure in both martial arts and cinema history. Bruce Lee's artistic talents extended beyond acting. He also had a deep passion for dancing. He showcased this by winning the Cha Cha Champion competition in Hong Kong, proving his versatility and rhythmical skills. Lee's father harbored grand ambitions for his son, especially in the context of post-World War II Hong Kong. The city, still recovering from the war's devastation, grappled with widespread poverty, unemployment, and the resultant rise in crime and violence. This environment possibly contributed to the popularity of martial arts among the youth as it became both a necessity for self-defense and a source of pride. Bruce Lee, being a product of this society, frequently found himself in skirmishes. His father, recognizing the importance of formal training in martial arts for self-defense and discipline, enrolled him under the tutelage of Master Ip Man, an expert in the Wing Chun technique. Lee also learned from Wong Shun Lung, another skilled practitioner. As Lee's proficiency in martial arts grew, so did the frequency of his confrontations, some escalating to the point of police involvement. After a warning from the police about possible arrest, his parents decided to remove him from the volatile environment. Seeking a safer and more stable life for their son, they sent Bruce Lee to Seattle, USA, to stay with a relative who owned a small restaurant. There, Lee balanced his time between studying philosophy and arts during the day and working in the restaurant in the evening. Despite his academic pursuits, his martial arts skills impressed his classmates more. With the growing popularity of Chinese Kung Fu worldwide, many Americans expressed interest in learning from Lee. Sensing an opportunity, Lee maturely transformed this interest into a business venture, starting to teach Kung Fu in educational institutions. It was in this setting that Bruce Lee met Linda Emery, a significant encounter that would shape much of his personal life and contribute to his legacy. Bruce Lee and Linda Emery's attraction to each other culminated in a decision to marry, despite societal barriers stemming from their differing Chinese and American nationalities. At the time, both Chinese and American cultures generally discouraged intermarriage. Nevertheless, driven by love that transcended societal norms and traditions, the couple proceeded with a court marriage. They intended to keep their marriage a secret to avoid controversy, but their plan was inadvertently foiled. The process of obtaining a marriage certificate from the court 
included a stipulation that the couple's names be published in the press a day before the marriage, a detail Lee and Linda were unaware of. As a result, their marriage became public knowledge through a media advertisement. Linda's family, upon discovering the marriage like everyone else, initially reacted with anger but eventually accepted it. The reaction from Lee's family and his countrymen was more intense. Although his family took a few months to come to terms with the marriage, the broader Chinese community harbored persistent resentment. Their displeasure, however, was more deeply rooted in Lee's decision to teach Kung Fu to Americans in Oakland, California. Many Chinese in Oakland were opposed to sharing their centuries-old martial arts techniques with non-Chinese individuals. These techniques were considered deeply secret and a cultural treasure. In response to Lee's defiance of this norm, he was challenged to a fight with a leading Kung Fu master, Wong Jackman, following Chinese conventions. The terms were clear. If Lee won, he could continue teaching Kung Fu. If he lost, he would have to stop. Lee accepted the challenge and defeated Wong Jackman in just three minutes. Despite his victory, Lee was not satisfied. He believed that the length of the fight, 180 seconds, reflected a personal weakness, as he had aspired to win in mere seconds. This experience motivated him to train even harder to achieve perfection. He adopted an intense daily regimen, which included performing 2,000 punches, 1,000 kicks, running 8 kilometers, and cycling 24 kilometers. His dedication to physical fitness and martial arts was so extreme that his wife, Linda, sometimes considered him obsessive. He was constantly engaged in physical exercises and refining his martial arts techniques, often handing over his personal belongings to his wife to practice a new fighting stance or move. This relentless pursuit of excellence and innovation in martial arts significantly contributed to Bruce Lee's legendary status. Bruce Lee's one-inch punch, a technique he showcased for the first time at the Long Beach Karate Tournament in 1964, remains one of the most astonishing feats in martial arts history. At this event, he not only demonstrated his remarkable ability to do push-ups with just two fingers, but also introduced the one-inch punch. This technique involved delivering a powerful punch that could send a robust, able-bodied person flying backward, all from a mere inch away. Lee could also break solid wooden boards with the same technique. This one-inch punch baffled many, as it seemed impossible to generate such immense force from such a short distance. Experts in physics and anatomy have since tried to decipher the mechanics behind this feat. Lee's technique involved channeling the entire power of his body, starting from his toes and focusing it at one point, transferring all that energy through his hand. The one-inch punch is considered one of the most impressive moves in martial arts, and at just 24 years old, Lee had the martial arts world eager to learn this technique from him. Lee was an unparalleled figure in martial arts, with many champions either his direct students or having learned by observing his training. Among his notable students were Joe Lewis, Chuck Norris, and Mike Stone. Lee was a master of Wing Chun, but he went on to develop a new technique called Jeet Kune Do, which was a fusion of various fighting styles, including wrestling, fencing, and boxing. He allowed three of his students to teach this art, further spreading his influence. In 1965, Bruce Lee's martial arts prowess caught the attention of Hollywood. A hairdresser from 20th Century Fox, impressed by Lee's skills at the Long Beach Tournament, relayed his abilities to the studio. Producer Dozier, intrigued, invited Lee for an audition. While this particular audition didn't immediately lead to a role, it introduced Lee to several leading producers and Hollywood studios. This exposure paid off the following year when he secured the role of the sidekick hero, Kato, in the TV series The Green Hornet, marking the beginning of his ascent in Hollywood. During the filming of The Green Hornet, Bruce Lee encountered two unique challenges that threatened his burgeoning career in Hollywood. These challenges were as intriguing as they were problematic. The first issue concerned the technological limitations of the cameras used at the time. Bruce Lee's movements were so incredibly fast that the cameras, designed to capture regular human motion, 
failed to accurately record his swift actions. This resulted in his movements appearing blurred in the recordings, posing a significant problem for the directors. To address this, Lee was asked to slow down his actions, such as punches and kicks, for the camera. This adjustment suggests that the actual speed of Lee's movements in real life was even faster than what was depicted on screen. The second challenge was more contentious and related to the storyline of the series. A script required Lee to lose a fight against another character named Robin. However, Lee, deeply invested in his martial arts prowess and reputation, refused to portray defeat, even in a fictional context. Contrary to the script, he issued a real fight challenge to Robin. The producers attempted to negotiate with Lee, but he stood firm in the early stages of his Hollywood career, unwilling to compromise on this point. Eventually, the script was altered to end the fight in a draw, with no clear winner. According to other actors, Robin was reportedly apprehensive about engaging in a real fight with Lee. Despite the interesting behind-the-scenes dynamics, The Green Hornet failed to resonate with American audiences and was canceled after its first season. This setback left Bruce Lee unemployed, just as he was beginning to realize his dreams in Hollywood. Though the series was not a commercial success, it did establish Lee as a capable action movie actor and familiarized him with the nuances of acting in Hollywood. Lee continued to pursue leading roles, but faced a significant hurdle, Hollywood's reluctance to cast an Asian actor in a central role, largely due to concerns about ratings and market appeal. This bias was so pronounced that Hollywood preferred casting American actors in roles like Genghis Khan, historically suited for Asian or Mongolian actors. In this environment, Bruce Lee faced slim chances of landing significant roles, highlighting the challenges he had to overcome in his journey to stardom. Amid his struggles to secure acting roles in Hollywood, Bruce Lee faced another significant challenge. He had stopped teaching martial arts or kung fu to focus on his acting career, leaving him without a steady job or income. With the added responsibility of supporting his family, including his son Brandon and daughter Shannon Lee, financial pressures mounted. A friend suggested that Lee could leverage his renown in martial arts to train Hollywood stars, providing a much-needed source of income. This idea proved successful, and Lee began imparting martial arts training to notable personalities, including actors James Coburn and Steve McQueen, as well as sports stars like the seven-foot-tall basketball player Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. However, when Lee was 29, he faced a severe setback, he suffered a slipped disc during a weightlifting session, a result of exercising without proper warm-up. The injury was so severe that doctors advised him he would never be able to perform martial arts again. Undeterred by this prognosis, Lee rested for a short period before resuming his rigorous exercise routine, disregarding medical advice. This period was challenging due to his back problem, but his passion for martial arts drove him to push his physical limits. Remarkably, Lee not only recovered fully but also enhanced his martial arts skills, performing even better post-recovery. Despite this improvement, a breakthrough in Hollywood continued to elude him. He remained primarily an instructor until he took a pivotal decision that would eventually catapult him to stardom. Lee decided to capitalize on what was perceived as his major weakness, turning it into his greatest strength. His cryptic remark to a friend, Bruce Lee may be no more, hinted at the inner turmoil and perhaps premonitions he faced. His subsequent and mysterious death remains a topic of much speculation and controversy, shrouded in unanswered questions. Bruce Lee's life, filled with both triumphs and trials, continues to inspire and intrigue fans and scholars alike. For those fascinated by history and true stories, the channel Historical Highlights offers a series of narratives celebrating such influential figures and events. Their dedicated efforts in producing this content aim to enlighten and engage audiences with the rich tapestry of our shared past.